Hello and welcome to our very first Scripture Teachers Training video. It's in the middle of the coronavirus situation at the moment and we've created a great series of awesome videos filled with tips, tricks and training for Scripture Teachers at any stage of their training, but especially if you've just started out. But I'm sure if you're a Scripture Teacher who has done this for many years, it's always good to refresh ourselves and continue growing and learning about how we can best be teaching God's Word in schools. So, my name's Chris. I'm the Maternity Relief Scripture Coordinator at All Saints Balgala, and we are creating these videos every single week for Scripture teachers so that when we're back in schools um, and later down the track, if you're watching this um, further beyond the coronavirus situation, I pray that these would be helpful videos that you as teacher could be equipped and find any of this useful. That would be incredible. All right, so before we dive into this week's topic, I think I'll just go over a few things so that we're not confused about what it looks like teaching our approved providers and with our approved curriculum in our schools. The first thing is, is that we are never to sway from the approved curriculum. So, for example, the God Space curriculum. Any of my tips and tricks are designed to be used in complementary form with the approved curriculum. We cannot teach anything that isn't the approved curriculum in public schools. So what I mean by this is we never change what the material is inside this. Yes, we can come up with creative ways to teach the content. However, the content has to stay the same. Just want to reiterate that. You would have done scripture training, five different models that would have reiterated that. So please remember to stick to your modules and stick to the curriculum. This is these videos are designed to help you actually come up with creative ways, in innovative solutions, and to help sharpen and clarify your teaching from this curriculum. Perfect. The second thing is, is that everything we do has to be biblically based. We teach scripture primarily from the Bible. That is our number one source as well with our approved curriculum of where we get all of our truth. So none of the things that I say are going to contradict or get in the way of what the Bible says. And we want to prioritize teaching the Bible first. So for example, if any of these tips and tricks, you feel like those are gimmicks or things that are going to get in the way of teaching the Bible, well then the Bible comes first. We always want to teach the Bible first. We want to teach the Bible well, and so all of our things that we need to be learning about, all of our methods, they have to promote teaching the Bible well. If the teaching method becomes the thing we prioritize, then we lose the power of the word. And remember that this is such a privilege to be able to talk about the Bible in schools. So what you'll expect in these videos is that I'll be sharing with you a creative technique, a method, um, a way of thinking about teaching the Bible that hopefully is really practical, really simple, and really easy for you to put into practice when you teach back in schools. So each week we're going to go through a couple of those. Depends on how much time I have to make these videos, but we're going to be making at least one a week so that you can continue to sharpen your teaching, sharpen the creative way you teach the Bible, and that we're ready to go and we're equipped, empowered, and inspired when we get back into teaching in the classroom. So, with all that said, I think it's time to finally get on to our topic of the day, which is object lessons. Now, some of you may know what an object lesson is, some of you may not be sure, or some of you might be looking for some ways that an object lesson can help sharpen and improve your teaching. When it comes to teaching children, we know that there is more effective ways of teaching and that there are less effective ways of teaching. One of the less effective ways of teaching is just speaking constantly while the kids listen. Yes, all of us have to speak and share and talk and read the Bible when we do our lessons. I'm not necessarily talking about that, but when we have uninterrupted blocks of just us talking with no interaction, not too much student engagement, that is a surefire way where we're gonna lose people's attention, we're gonna lose our children's attention, and they might start to fidget, they might start to talk between themselves, or they may just start to tune out and not find what you're talking about engaging. And again, we're not, con we're not contradicting what the Bible says, but we want to bring the Bible to life and we want to do all we can to make sure our students are engaged and engaging with the Bible passage that we're talking about. One of the great ways we can do this is by using an object lesson. So our students often find concrete things that are tangible and in our hands quite helpful to talk about spiritual concepts that may be very hard for young minds to grasp 
on their own. An object lesson helps this by bringing in an everyday object that a student or a child can understand has interacted with in their life and then linking that to a spiritual concept. Jesus did this all the time in his parables by linking everyday stories, everyday things that happen, mustard seeds and parables of gardening and losing coins and all kinds of things. He then related that to spiritual concepts and we still find that very powerful today. How do we capture the hearts and minds of our students using object lessons? Here are some examples. This example could be an object lesson on the fruit of the spirit. You might want to make this spiritual concept seem more real by bringing in your own plastic fruit like I have or using real fruit. This will help the students understand that as fruit is produced from a tree, so our good deeds and the fruit of the spirit is produced when the spirit is at work in our hearts. That is the first example of what a good object lesson could look like. A second example could be using a mug or a cup or the cup that I have here to illustrate an example of Jesus' teaching. Jesus said to the Pharisees that they were like whitewashed tombs, that they cleaned the outside of the cup, but the inside was dirty. You see, the Pharisees were religious leaders who on the outside looked like they had it all together, but were in fact living in sin in their hearts. This is a good example to kids to show how God wants us to have a pure heart that is free from sin. Great. They're just two examples of what an object lesson looks like. Now I'm going to give you a couple of tips to make your own object lesson for the lesson that you're teaching at home. First tip is to keep it simple. Make sure your object, the children are going to know what it is. Make sure that the object has a really clear link to the Bible lesson you're talking about. If, there's, if the link takes you more than 30 seconds to talk about, it's probably too far apart. We don't want our children being more confused by our object than actually finding it helping them link to the passage. So let's keep it simple. Pick a good object, take your time, make sure you find that right object and make sure that it has a really good strong link that's simple to understand for the child that you're teaching to. Second tip is to know the purpose of your lesson. The purpose or the aim of the lesson is always at the beginning of your approved curriculum and it's the thing that you're repeating and cementing in the students' lives and hearts over the course of your lesson. So if you know the purpose of your lesson, it will make it easier to pick an object that has a really strong link to your lesson. So go around the house, go around your place of work, the places where you're allowed to get objects and have that purpose concrete in your mind. Once you've done that, you'll be able to find and reject objects that are going to work or that aren't going to work. It is a good thing to remember that maybe an object lesson isn't the right way to teach your lesson this time around. An object lesson might not always be the best way to teach your lesson. So please feel free to be flexible, be creative. If an object lesson, if you're finding it too hard, just leave it and maybe move on to a different creative way of teaching your story. That way you don't get frustrated and confused trying to prepare your lesson for the week. The third tip is to be engaging as possible with your object. Just like the purpose of the lesson is repeated often throughout the lesson to cement it in the student's mind, so do that with your object as well. First of all, make sure that you bring in an object that isn't damaged or broken or is hard to understand, but make sure you bring in the best possible, even the biggest possible object of the object you're picking and make sure that you have it linked throughout your lesson. Bring it in the beginning, bring it into the middle, bring it in at the end. This is a great way of helping the students have repetition as well as to continue to allow their minds to piece together why the object links in with that lesson. Great, thanks guys. Just remember that this is like a little tool in your toolbox. I think it's great as teachers of God's word if we have a great big toolbox and we have a bunch of different tools that we can pull out for suitable lessons. This is so good to feel equipped with 10 or 20 different ways of teaching a certain topic so that we can always be picking the one that is most appropriate and is gonna put the focus on God's word in each and every lesson. So consider your object lesson as a great tool to put in your teacher's toolkit. Remember, we're always gonna put the Bible first, always put the word first, always stick to your curriculum, be creative, feel like you can always put this tool back in and grab another different creative idea if you need to in your teaching. 
What I encourage you to do with the object lessons is to practice. If you're willing, maybe you could film yourself and see how you went and how you can improve. Maybe you could teach someone who you're quarantined with at home. Maybe you can just teach the mirror. A great way to sharpen our teaching is to practice in this time. So I hope you have fun practicing using object lessons. I hope that sharpens you and grows you as you connect with God's word and we continue to grow as teachers. That's all for this week. We've got more teaching tips and tricks and great things to know coming up soon. Thanks so much for tuning in. Bless you.